Hello, I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, host of Higher Education Today, a production of the University of the District of Columbia. Welcome back to the education program that connects you to contemporary issues, people, and institutions involved in the world of higher education. Today we'll be talking about music and music education with two members of the Grammy Award-winning a cappella group, Lady Smith Black Mambazo. More than 20 universities every year host Lady Smith Black Mambazo, who, along with Paul Simon, performed together during the anti-apartheid Graceland tour. Joseph Shabalala is the founder of Lady Smith Black Mambazo and the guiding force behind their harmonizing. Albert Mazabuku is a longtime member of the group, known for his exuberant stage presence both on and off campus. We taped the interview backstage at Strathmore Hall in Montgomery County, Maryland. And today we're going to talk about Lady Smith Black Mambazo and music education around the world. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, Joseph, maybe if we could start with you. Um, you were the founder of Lady Smith Black Mambazo. I'm the founder of Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Before I did that, I was uh, uh, at home. I used to sing and dance. Albert Masbogo was young at that time, and they grew up and he visited me. He wanted me to know him because he is my brother, we call brother. And I was surprised this young man visited an old man like me. Now I know. Today he's with me. He's always singing with me. He was coming to get that, but just like a person who is praying, I'm going to see my brother. I want to talk to him. And he absorbed all what I want. That's why today he is also Lady Smith Black Mambas. What do you have to say about that, Albert? Do you, uh, is that an accurate uh, rendition of what happened many years ago? Yes, it is correct. And uh, it reminds me, you know, when I was a young man, so I used to look up to him. He was my hero. I like everything what he, he does at that time, and especially when he sings. I used to listen to his singing and said, he sings so well. I remember in 1960 when I first saw him with his group, it was Christmas time. During Christmas uh, on the farm, so we used to have a concert. So uh, they came and then he sang so beautifully. I had my own choir at that time. And then I consider my choir as the best because we were the youngest in the area. Mm -hmm. But we used to win all the competition around that area. So when they came sing, and then I told my group that uh, I'm going to leave you. And then when I grow up, I'll go and join him. So that happens. Maybe nine years later, that was 1969, I was able to join him. Which is terrific. I, I Just for the record, I have actually seen uh, Lady Smith Black Mambazo perform, and you guys are magical. So I was delighted to have you on the show. And I love the way that you sing, and you represent uh, what I consider to be hope and, and a message of hope. But am I interpreting that correctly? Exactly. Yeah, that, this, that is correct. Um, Mr. Masbubo remind me something that I have been singing many, many, many years. I think now is the time for me to sit down and listen and correct them and other people if they want me to do. Because uh, I think what I hear in my ears all the time when you make a mistake, I feel like that let us talk, let us laugh, and then after that, talk to you about, don't you think that mistake, we can fix it? And you say, which mistake? And I laugh. Laughing is something very good. Albert always laughing. Notice that him on stage, he always laughing. It means that he is talking to the audience. Told the audience that if there's a mistake, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Well, I wanted to get to the issue not only of laughing but also dreaming. If I understood this correctly, you had a dream and your dream was to incorporate all these thoughts of laughing and other things together. Is, is that right? The dream changed my mind the dream correct me in any uh, 
the way to dance, how to go together with your voice and dancing. The, it was just like a group of people in between the sky and the, f and the ground. They were singing, showing me. They are just like my teacher. When I wake up, I feel like I'm hungry to find my group and talk to them about this story. I did that, but it take long time until Albert grew up and joined the group. And I come back again. I discovered that he is a person who loved to listen. It was easy to work with him and his late brother who was singing the high alto, that man. And from there, people started to look at us. Hey, these guys, what happened to you? And we, we cool down, but we don't want people to hear while we were doing practice. And then when we come to the hall, and people said, these guys are in danger. <laughs> in danger of winning. Yeah, danger of winning all the, the, the goats until we were fired, go and sing for the people, not for goats. Fair enough. And Albert, in terms of your connecting with audiences, uh, I think that that's probably true. How do you feel when you relate to the audience? You know, when I'm on stage, uh, I'm in my happiest moment all the time. So the, the smiling and then in my face, it just happened. It's, it's not something that I, I, uh, I'm struggling to do it. <laughs> because the music, when I sing, I feel so happy inside. And then so all my worries and the concerns, all they disappear. So I just be there and happy and enjoy the moment. Fair enough. Do you think that we should have young people learn to sing at a young age? Absolutely, because I myself and also Professor Shabalala here next to me, we learn singing while we're still young. I remember when I was a little, I, I can't even remember what year, how old I was at that time. I used to sing every time when the family is together. I remember one evening my uncle, he, he said, you are too, you are too precocious. Just sit down <laughs> because every time when they together, so I like it to sing and, and dance. Also, I grew up with my grandmother. She was a Isangoma, the diviner. So that's when I learned the most of my singing because we sing every evening before we go to sleep, every evening and dance. So I think people, they should learn singing while they were young. But I think even the older people too, if you feel like it, you can learn how to sing. As Professor was saying here, yeah. so he always have a way of teaching people. He used to say, if you can talk, you can sing. So I believe him because what he has taught me in terms of singing to using my voice, my body when I dance, uh, my spirit to put my mind in it. So I find it so easy when we have a good teacher. Well, do you think that there are people who can't learn to sing? I don't think he believes that. <laughs> I think everybody can <laughs> learn to sing because singing is just like we are talking. You want to talk to the people, you can sing for them. It's up to you how to connect one another, the basses, altos, and tenors. It's up to you. How, what are you going to put, voices? It's very easy. It's tough. It's easy. When I say easy, I mean you must be patient to listen one another. Well, how do we listen if we don't know the music? Open <laughs> to <clears throat> uh, you know, according to our culture, the way we, s we learn how to sing is, uh, is something that is not uh, an effort. It's not something that you are struggling to do. You know, it's like when you are walking, 
someone can say, let's work. In our language, we say, Sia Hamba. Sia Hamba. Which Asambe Mfuetu. Asambe. Asambe Mfuetu. Was Asambe. Asambe Mfuetu. Asambe. Asambe. You see, it's something that will make it easy. <coughs> and then, so the, the singing in our culture is not something that you have to know. You just do it. And then, as you say, you listen. You listen to someone, like making, a, a, when you are singing, you are harmonizing. So mm. when someone is singing the lower voice, you can, okay, my voice is lighter, I can sing, uh, you know, higher than him or lower than him. So that's how we sing. Well, I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate that having spent a fair amount of time in South Africa in my life. Mm. But let's assume somebody's watching this in a university in the United States who doesn't have uh, that view, and they're taking a music class for the first time at a university. How, how should they dive into the spirit of music in the way that you're suggesting? When we talk about music, it's something that you have in your blood. And you go to other people and say, I have this. You must be here. You must be here. I'm going to lead you or maybe I'm going to follow you. Listen one another and choose which is the right place. Once you choose and you, the combination is together and you'll hear people whispering, hey, this thing is good, it's coming. When they say it's coming, it means that we are just started to do something. Other people, they used to say, when you say, oh, you are coming, very nice, you are coming, and they run away from you. It's supposed to ask you, yes, we are in a, a right way. Can you show us how to do it? That is the way the music can grow up. Hmm. That's interesting. And what about, as you're growing up, how do you incorporate other musical traditions? Um, it's easy because the tradition things, all every Saturday, Sunday, Friday, together, that lady down there, that man down there will start the song and you try to end and they said, no, that is my song. Don't enter on that way, but connect with me like this and this always teaching one another. At home they used to say, oh, libimbi, which means that, oh, you get in the wrong way. Watch out. We no ma timba. I'm just beginning the song. Another one would come in, maybe lucky, good. He's, a, he's working with me now. When on my timba, lipi timba lako, ngili koshi wekaya. No matemba, where do you believe? Ah, I believe at home. Hmm, fair enough. Speaking of home, I realize that you have uh, not too much time at home because you spend a lot of time on the road. How often are you on the road every year? Uh, the most maybe eight months a year. And the most, you mean, that means the most you're at home is four months of the year? Yes, yeah. But there's some, we used to go maybe two months and then we go back home maybe one week. So when you combine those and then you add it together, it's about four months the most at home, but outside it's about eight months. So in any given day, do you have any idea where you are? Uh, we don't know about that where we are because we have people who are taking care of that. So we just <laughs> be happy that you are going to be driven there and then when you are there. So what our job is to put the set list and then perform. And then after that, we get into the car or in the bus or in the plane. So we are in the next. Well, for the record, we are at Strathmore Hall in, in, <laughs> in, in Maryland in the United States, 
And there are 2,000 people waiting to hear uh, you gentlemen and your colleagues uh, perform tonight. Thank you. Which is very exciting. That's, mm. a, that's a blessing. That's wonderful. Mm. What about universities? Have you performed at a number of universities? You know, especially in the winter, when we come to state in the winter, we perform a lot in the universities. And then I find it so interesting that uh, most of the university we find some people who are singing, choirs singing. Some of them they sing in South African music, and some of them they sing the music from other part of the, con the, the continent or other part of the world. So it's so wonderful, you know. I love university. I think America is so blessed that you have so many universities. Well, you know, a lot of people in Africa don't really understand that we have over 3,000 universities in the United States. 3,000? <laughs> <laughs> in South Africa, I can count the universities, how many are they? Uh, you know, we have, we, we, uh, we have nine yeah. provinces. Yeah. Some of the provinces, they don't have university. Mm. We don't have maybe even more than 20 universities, I don't know. Mm. So. Well, when I'm not hosting the show, and this is going to sound a little crazy, when I'm not hosting the show, I actually help people to figure out which of those universities are most appropriate for them. So there's actually a, a, a market in the United States for people to figure out which of those universities make the most sense for them, because we have so many of them. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's good. That's good. Well, if I could speak to the issue, or ask you more specifically, about the issue of music education at the university level. When you've performed at different universities, have you ever talked to any of the music professors about some of the work that they've been doing on campus? Yes, we have. Where some universities we used to have uh, workshops, or sometimes they call it master class. And then those people who are in charge in music programs, so they used to come to us and then they said, let's share what you have. And then so we share with them. Sometimes we, we teach them the songs. We teach them how to teach one another the song. And then as was professor was saying, yeah, it's Professor Shabalala, that you, you just sing the song so the other people, they follow, they join you. So that's a, a way of, our way of learning how to sing. Were there any funny things that have happened to you when you've been uh, traveling on the road, generally and or on campuses, when you've tried to uh, incorporate in any of those master classes? Mm, I think people, they, they pay much, I think, respect to us. We've never seen anything funny. So they always, you know, so they, what, what, what is good about it sometimes, they just want to sing for us. And so they sing for you? Yes, yeah, they do that. That must be a nice change of pace for you. Yes, it's, it's beautiful. It's nice to sit down yeah. and then you see people Listen and they, they sing for us and then you say, wow, this is wonderful. Some of them, they sing our, our songs, especially the song that uh, Rain, Rain, Beautiful Rain. They like to sing that one. And some other uh, songs from South Africa. What advice would you give for students who don't love to practice? They don't love to practice the violin. They don't love to practice the piano. How do, how do you get people excited about that? First of all, you have to listen to your teacher and then learn what that you have been given to learn and practice. Practice, it makes perfect, and then, but you have to practice extra. If you have been given two hours of practice and then do four hours, you will be amazed how quick you will be perfect. Fair enough. Nelson Mandela has called you cultural ambassadors of South Africa, if I interpreted that correctly. Yes, you did. <laughs> That's quite an honor. He called us. <sighs> it's wonderful. Hmm. It's wonderful. Nelson Mandela is a magic guy. That's why he discovered that uh, to us, because the time when we get together, the, 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 the sparkling, was behind us. We keep it. We don't want somebody to take it. But Nelson Mandela just take it. Said, "Yeah, behind you guys. You must go to the people, sit down with them, and talk to them. You have a gift. You call a gift. We're just singing. Feel like to listen one another will give us something like peace in our mind." 
in our hearts to have that time to get together and try to do something. You gain, except that people invite you and get money to sit down together and talk about music. You gain more than what you gain to the people giving you something. Well, do you think that Nelson Mandela's gifts are musical in a certain way? Yeah, he's a, he's a musician. He's a very good musician. I remember when we were in London, we didn't know that he is around. They just call us to come and sing in the uh, radio, in the TV. And the time when we enter, yes, Nelson Mandela, he begins the song. Long way, long way, long walk to freedom. And we sang, we were laughing, we were very happy, we were surprised. When we talk about music, we talk about our life. To respect music, you respect your life. Well, and speaking of respect, this is now many years after 1994 mm. when Nelson Mandela became president of South Africa. Mm. Some people argue that the South Africa of 2013 is, is a very different place than 1994. Mm. Uh, would you agree or not agree to, with that? I think it depends on the uh, people, yes, it is a long time. Some people, they, had, they, 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 they have achieved so much. Unfortunately, so some other people, they haven't. So some other people, it seems, it, the long time, it benefited them. Some other people, a long time, it didn't. So I think it's, that's a way in the world. So what you should do, you should find a, your way how to achieve what you want to achieve. But do you think Lady Smith Black Mambazo is helping the transition the South Africa before 1994 and the 2013 South Africa and the rest of the world? Our music even now, they're still encouraging people to do better for themselves, work together and share ideas because there is a lot of ideas around the world. So if you share that one, so you can achieve more. That's our music, what is it about? Mm. We have a field here in the United States called music therapy, where people who have had physical ailments find that music helps them get better physically. Mm. Do you have anything like mm. that in South Africa? You no, know, I, 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 I am a witness of that. There was a time when I was sick, and then he took me to a church, and then that, that was the singing. And then that singing that night, it healed me, and then I was cured, just, just for singing. That's, that's, that's really happening. That's interesting. Well, we also, some people also believe that that works with art as well, mm. that the process of drawing or the process of creating things yes. is therapeutic. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Fair enough. If we could move to the issue of touring a little bit, since uh, I find this really interesting that you have everything taken care of while you're on the road. Do you share hotel rooms? Do you each get your own hotel room? Do you all eat together every day? Do you get to visit people when you go to different cities? How does the tour work? You know, <laughs> speaking of sharing and just doing things together, we are a family and we are a happy family. It's so nice to be on tour. So we do things, especially when you are on the bus, you know, the tour bus, I love that it's my best place on the tour because we sit together, we joke, we, we watch TV, we cook, we eat. Some other people, they just sit down and say, okay, are you cooking something there? Or can you bring, you know, some for me? <laughs> so it's so wonderful. And then so even to go to see people, our friends, they come and see us. So we share what we have with them. Um, in terms of uh, American music, is there uh, American music that have that you listen to when you're here? I listen to uh, most gospel music and uh, country music. 
that's the music I like to listen to. But all music is good. I used to listen to the guy called, I can't remember his name, when he sings, Louis Armstrong. <laughs> that guy take me like, <laughs> what happened to me? What's going on? <laughs> I, I was very happy when I came here and I saw him. Have you ever performed? N not really. We, we, when we get in there, he finish and then we were coming to that stage. Mm. Well, actually, that, that, that brings me to a question. How, what is it like when you perform with another group that perhaps, or usually you're probably not practicing with all the time? How does mm. that work? Mm -hmm. But it's... We, <laughs> in music, we have one note. Whether it's alto, it's tenor, but it's there. Once you get there, you can play the piano, you can play the guitar, and everything is there. If you would like additional information about Joseph Shabalala or Albert Mazabuku, please visit Mambazo.com. I would like to extend a special thank you to the following people. Mitch Goldstein, the Embassy of South Africa in Washington, the Embassy of Canada in Washington, Mia Goodman, and Nancy Santos. If you have comments or suggestions about higher education today, please send an email to our viewer mailbox at highereducationtoday at topcolleges.com. Thank you for watching. We will continue to bring you quality discussions about important matters in today's college and university world. Please join me again for another edition of Higher Education Today. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today.